Well, St. Mary's was on a high after taking down Gonzaga last Saturday, facing Loyola Marymount Thursday night. They opened the game with the first 16 points, but then a battle. Seven ties, seven lead changes, and then OT. The Lions, Cam Shelton, he went off. He scored all of his career high 31 points in the second half and in overtime. And it was Loyola Marymount getting the win at the end. The students storming the court when the Lions handed 15th ranked St. Mary's their first conference loss, 78-74. St. Mary's dropping down to a five seed. Now, coming into this game, St. Mary's was 21-4. They had 12 wins in a row. That streak now broken. Looking at these longest active win streaks this season, the Eastern Washington Eagles currently on a 14-game win streak. They will be facing Idaho on Saturday night. Let's welcome in our king of bracketology, Jerry Plum. Now, Jerry, I want to start with that St. Mary's game coming off a big win over Gonzaga, only to lose in overtime to LMU, a team that they've had so much success against in the past. How does this loss affect their status? Well, it's dropped them one seed line in the bracket. They're down to a five now. I mean, St. Mary's has got great metrics, especially the mar margin of victory-based metrics like Ken Palm and Sagarin and the net, but their resume doesn't quite match up to that. So they're in the top 10 of those, but they're really more of a four or five seed kind of a team in terms of their overall resume. They, they have that win over Gonzaga. Uh, they also beat San Diego State, uh, but they've also got two quad two losses, Loyola now being one of those, and a quad three loss. So there really isn't a lot of room uh, for them to take losses in this league other than to Gonzaga without really hurting their seed. And a quick turnaround for them as well, facing Portland Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Now, speaking of CBS, we have a projected one seed Kansas in action on Saturday against Oklahoma. That's 1 p.m. on CBS. The Jayhawks are heading into Norman to face this Oklahoma squad that's riding a three-game losing streak. So how do you see this one playing out, and how is it affecting the bracketology? Well, for Oklahoma, I mean, they, they need to win this and a couple more to get back into the conversation for the NCAA tournament, really get back onto the bubble. Uh, but this is a tall order because Kansas is the number one seed. They're one of the best teams in the country they, all every year. And this, this, you know, you're know, you playing them at home, so you want to try and take advantage. But for Kansas, a loss to Oklahoma might knock them off the top line. Uh, it would be their worst loss of the year, even though Oklahoma is a pretty good team and in the top 50 of the net. Uh, but still for Kansas, if they want to stay on the top line of the bracket, this one's must win. Yeah, the last time these two teams met, it was Kansas with the win, 79-75. So next up, Baylor looking for that quad one win against TCU. The Bears 7-4 and four in Big 12 play. The Horn Frogs, they're dealing with some injuries there. They dropped three of their last four games. What are we looking at at this one? Yeah, for TCU, it's about getting back on track. And I don't know if Mike Miles is coming back for this game or not, but he's missed the last couple. And, and you know, that's a guy that TCU really depends on. I'm, I don't know if he's a first-team All-American level player, but he's definitely the key for TCU. They lost to Northwestern State without him. He hasn't played the last couple of games. So they really need him back if they're going to make the kind of run they need to stay at the top of the bracket in the top, like, four seeds. For Baylor, Baylor's had a really good season. Nobody's really talking about him much. They've got six losses, but they're all quad one, and they're all to high-level teams in the bracket. So... I, Baylor is looking now for a big win to you know boost them up possibly even higher, although they have crawled up to the second line this week. Mm, the Horn Frogs, though, they've gone 11 and 2 in home games, so it's going to be a tough one there. That leads me to our next topic. So the Big 12, just in general, the conference it continues to be the most impressive in college basketball. What's your take on kind of where the Big 12 stands? Oh, it's the best league, top to bottom. No one else is even close. It's like there is no number two. There's a battle <laughs> for number three. But all of the teams in this league are in the top 50 of the net, except for Texas Tech, and they're in the top 75, I believe. So you're, you've got a quad one game almost every time you take the floor in this league. Now, so far, Oklahoma and Texas Tech have not been up to the task of putting together a good enough record to get in the NCAA tournament. West Virginia and lately Oklahoma State, those two teams have crawled onto the bottom of the bracket, but you know, it's perilous because you've got to be there every night. It's a real grind in that league. Everybody else is in the top five seeds. So this is a very strong league at the top. Uh, they're going to beat each other up. Teams are going to get seeded higher than you'll find at the end of the year, that is. They'll get seeded higher than normally teams with the number of losses that they're going to have get seeded because of the strength of their schedules. 
It's exhausting. It really, every game matters there. And when we're looking at conferences in general as well, you look at the ACC, they're historically having a down year. Our Matt Norlander, your good friend, referencing that in a tweet, he said this might end up as the worst top to bottom season for the ACC in modern history. What's your take? I actually thought last year was worse. Ah! But, <laughs> well, Duke was a two seed last year, and I don't know if they've got a team of that caliber this year. They only put five teams in the tournament. North Carolina had to get hot to become an eight. And then they had a, a 10 in Miami. Uh, Virginia Tech had to win their way in. Notre Dame was the last team in. So, you know, they only had one team really in the top 30 of the bracket. This year, they might do a little better than that. They might put more teams in. They're still going to be bottom heavy in terms of the bracket. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's still a down year for this league. And, you know, Duke hasn't been Duke. Carolina hasn't been Carolina. In fact, Carolina is the last team in my bracket today. So it's, it's, it's a, been a struggle. And even Virginia, who's the, the best team in this league, has had its moments of trouble. So, yeah, it's not been a great year. They're not going to get a lot of teams in this tournament. And, it, and you're going to find most of them eight seed or below. How about the Big East Conference? you got five teams in the tournament right now. How, how is the Big East faring so far this season? Yeah, and those five are all pretty good. Uh, you know, Creighton had a six-game losing streak. Uh, they played half of those games without Kalkbrenner, uh, one of their key players. But, you know, those losses still count. You know, the committee doesn't pretend you would have won, and they don't pretend the game didn't happen, so you have to overcome that. And Creighton's won seven in a row. So, you know, they're doing a good job of repairing their resume. They played themselves into the top half of the bracket. UConn got off to a great start, struggled a little bit. They're coming back. So this is a matchup of teams that have turned things around uh, and now have to face each other to try and keep that momentum going. Uh, but Marquette, Xavier, Providence all also having really good years. In fact, Marquette and Xavier are among the top four seeds in the region in this bracket. So, yeah, a pretty good year at the top half of the bracket. Seton Hall still has a chance also to play their way in. I love seeing my UConn Huskies in there. And speaking of them, we got a matchup I want to discuss real quick. Ranked on ranked meeting. We got UConn at number 21 and number 23 Creighton on Saturday. How does a win for each team kind of change up their status? Well, they may get uh, Creighton in particular might get a boost because they're a little bit further down, so it's easier to move up uh, with a win like that. Uh, but for UConn, I believe that would be a road win, so you know also uh, has a chance to move up. But for these teams, it's about maintaining this really good momentum that they have built right after having some struggles earlier in the year. So you know, and but Creighton I think needs it more, especially because it's on their home floor. You know, you really want to defend your home floor uh, when you're playing games like this and trying to build a resume. That is Jerry Palm with the latest in college hoops. Jerry, thank you so much for joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. If you want more college hoops in your day, check out the Eye on College Basketball podcast, the most entertaining and informative of its kind. All the insider information that you could want and need, tune in and check it out today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.